Hello everyone, my name is Don, the movie reviewer, and today we're going to be talking about why Logan is such a disappointing movie. Now, I want to start off by saying something that might sound cheesy, but it's the truth. I'm not a DC fanboy. I'm not a Marvel fanboy. I'm just a fan of good movies. I'm just a good movie fanboy. And with that being said, I know Logan is like universally praised by everybody. And, you know, I don't listen to other reviewers before I go watch a movie, you know, because I feel like sometimes when I watch a reviewer talking about a particular movie that I really want to see, sometimes I feel like it kind of clouds my better judgment because then it's like, oh, you know, if they say it's really good, then my expectations go up a little too high and I may end up feeling disappointed. And then other times, you know, they'll say it's bad and then my ex expectations will be really low and I'll go in there, you know, with just clouds of judgment. And I take that mindset in the theater with me, even though I try to go uh, is just like very low standard as standards as possible. And I feel that with Logan, the hype is not real. I don't like the first two uh, Wolverine movies like X-Men Origins. I just watched that a few days ago and I don't like that movie. That movie absolutely sucks. I mean, Levi Shriver in that movie is great. Hugh Jackman in that movie is great. Other than that, CGI is bad. Then you move on to the Wolverine. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people say, Oh, you know, the Wolverine is decent. It's okay. I remember seeing the Wolverine in the theater and I fell asleep. And I thought the Wolverine was like a D kind of movie where it's just like, you know, it's pretty bad. Like, I don't care about this like semi love story with him and like the, the girl that he tries to protect and then the guy coming back from the beginning of the movie wanting to take his powers and the silver samurai stuff was all messed up that movie to me is a mess i don't care um and then you have logan and this video is called why logan is such a disappointing movie and so it's like you know i didn't have a lot of faith in logan being good before i saw it i was just like yeah the first the previous two movies suck i don't know about this and um once the reviews came out, you know, I didn't listen to any bias. I'm going there on my own thoughts, no clouded judgment in mine or anything. Just going there, boom, low expectations, and hopefully I come out really thoroughly enjoying this movie. And so, you know, but then I did hear that, like, some positive stuff where people was like, oh, you know, this movie, it's, it's really, really good. Like, people were super praising this movie. I didn't hear any, like, in-depth, you know, reviews about it, but I heard like just the, the scratch of the surface, like, oh yeah, this movie, you know, it's really, really, really good. And I'm like, okay, that's surprising. That's good. So then my expectations kind of, you know, risen a little bit. Like at first they were very low, like down to the floor. And then people were like, it was really, really good. And then I saw the Rotten Tomatoes score and it was very high. So then my expectations went a little bit higher. And so I was kind of pumped to watch Logan thinking, okay, it's going to be very, very good. Now, I want to go back to, to something very previous here where it's like, okay, I remember watching X-Men Days of Future Past. And I remember not liking X-Men Days of Future Past the first time I saw it. And I kept trying to figure out why. And I finally narrowed it down to it, it was Jennifer Lawrence. It was Mystique's Jennifer Lawrence in X-Men Days of Future Past that clouded my better judgment of that movie. And that's the reason why I hated it. Cause I was like, oh yeah, they're basing the Sentinels in the future around Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique. This is bullshit. It's like, why are they focusing on her? Like, 
I chalk it down to Mystique being the focal point in X-Men Days of Future Past. Like my problem with that movie that I realized later on was that, yeah, Mystique was the focal point. And I didn't like that because it's like, yeah, they based the Sentinels of the Future on Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique and everything revolves around her. And it's like the only reason they're doing that is because Mystique is like played by Jennifer Lawrence and Jennifer Lawrence is like, a, was a bankable star at that time. And it's like, well, you guys didn't give Rebe Rebecca Romaine that kind of push cause she wasn't that big of, you know, a star, I guess. I mean, it shouldn't really matter. I mean, whoever's the main character is the main character, but still it's like, you didn't give Rebecca Romaine that kind of, you know, push in the previous movies. And now all of a sudden, just cause it's Jennifer Lawrence. And so that clouded my better judgment of that movie. And after watching Days of Future Past like a hundred times, literally, I finally realized that, hey, the movie's good. Days of Future Past is probably one of like the top three best X-Men movies in my opinion, next to X2 uh, first and First Class. And so after coming around, I was like, okay, I can look past the Jennifer Lawrence Mystique stuff because she was actually good in the movie. I should just let my gripes go, throw that down the toilet and just watch this movie for its narrative and its story and its action and its suspense and all that's a great movie. It's really, really great. I love Days of Future Past after just throwing all of that Jennifer Lawrence hate out the window and forgetting about all of that. Now with Logan, is a different story. I saw Logan. Uh, first time in the theater, first time I saw Logan in the theater, I said to myself, all right, I'm pumped, I'm excited, let's go, let's do this. I sat down, the movie starts, you know, he's in the limousine, he's cutting up people, and I'm like, okay, cool, good opening. And then towards maybe like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later into it, I fell asleep. Then I woke up to this scene, and as I was watching this scene, I was entertained, I don't know. I just looked and I said, holy shit, man, that guy's dead. And then five minutes later after that, I fell asleep again. And then after that, I woke up again. I saw a couple of things, fell asleep again, saw the ending. I left, went home, did my review and said, this movie sucks. This is how I, this, I know myself, okay? And so this is how I chalk this is what I chalk all this down to is like, I could go to the theater and watch a movie off of like 30 minutes of sleep. And I could be extremely exhausted, super tired, right? And I can sit down in a theater. And once the movie starts, if the movie is good enough, if the movie catches my attention, keeps my eyes glued to the screen, and if it's engaging, no matter how tired I am, I will not fall asleep. I will not fall asleep. And that happens all the time. Once I fall asleep watching a movie, that means there was something wrong. It's nothing to do with me. Like, I could be super tired and st stay awake for 24 hours straight and then watch a movie. And if it's good enough, it will keep me awake for two, three hours, no matter how long it is, seriously. And if, it, if there's something wrong where it's like lacking or it's slow, it's not cohesive, I will fall asleep. And then most likely I'll wake up and then try and be like, okay, I need to catch up on this and you stay away because I missed a bunch of things. But then if there's something still not intriguing me, I will fall asleep again. And this has happened numerous times. So the first time I saw Logan, I admit I was kind of tired, but the movie just couldn't hold my attention because it was boring. And like when I mentioned the whole Mystique thing, right? It's like, yeah, Mystique, Jennifer Lawrence clouded my better judgment in Days of Future Past. After watching Days of Future Past like a hundred times and being like, okay, you know, put the Mystique stuff in the toilet, flush it, watch the movie as a movie. It's a great movie. One of the best X-Men movies. So I was thinking maybe there's something wrong with me and the reason why I don't like Logan. There's something, maybe I, maybe I was just tired, who knows? So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to the theater, give this another shot. Maybe I'm missing something. So I went back to the theater the very next day and watched Logan a second time. And mind you, I got enough sleep before I went. I had like one beer and I just downed an entire energy drink beforehand. And then I had a cup of coffee. I had an energy, energy drink and a cup of coffee before I saw Logan for the second time. So I was jack pumped, ready to go. And mind you, 
I went to a double feature that day. The first movie that I saw, which I saw for a second time, I saw two movies for the second time that day, which was Get Out. I saw it for the second time. And then Get Out, I stayed awake for that entire movie. And then once that was over, boom, went straight to Logan right after that. And I fell asleep again. And this is a person just getting out of the showing for Get Out a second time and staying awake through the entire thing, blood pumping, Get Out's good movie. And then also downing an energy drink and taking a sip of coffee, being extra jacked up, sitting in the front row, watching Logan for the second time, and I can't give us another chance. And I fell asleep again. So I was like, what's wrong with me? So then, you know, movie uh, comes out on DVD. And I watched it like three or four times. I've also seen a noir version and the color version is definitely better. Um, but I've seen it three or four times. So in total, I would say I have watched Logan at least six, about six times now. But or maybe five and a half, because the last time I watched it, I kind of like skimmed through it because it's just like, okay, I, I really don't like this movie. There are a lot of good things in here, like the positive things about Logan, I would say, is that Hugh Jackman's performance is fantastic. Like Hugh Jackman delivered on all cylinders in this movie. He was great. Patrick Stewart in this movie, I, I would say the best character and actor in this movie, number one, hands down, because his portrayal of Professor X after all of the other previous movies and this, seeing him this way and him and, and acting and everything, was fantastic. His Patrick Stewart's performance in Logan was a masterful, skillful, very touching, heart-wrenching performance. Patrick Stewart is the man. Then you got Daphne King. Her performance in this movie as well was phenomenal. She was great even though she didn't speak a lot. She just showed all that berserker rage. It flushed out of her and it looked very natural and she could handle her own ground with Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart, which was great. And then the violence in this movie was fantastic. I love all of the fight scenes. Like at the beginning, he puts the blades to the dude's neck and you hear him gargling like, oh, oh, oh. it's fantastic attention to detail. Then it's like, you know, you got the hotel scene or the casino scene, which is my favorite scene, the slow motion murder and everything, fantastic. And then you got the scene where he's like fighting uh, the version of himself at the farm and like, cutting each other up it's great then you got the ending where he's going berserker stabbing dudes left and right it's great all that violence all the action is phenomenal and that's pretty much it problems I have with this movie is that it's it's a lot of the stuff doesn't make any sense because it's like okay yeah the, you know all the stuff I just mentioned the acting is great the violence is great uh the themes in this movie that people keep telling me about you know Logan he's beaten up he's down he's not the hero he once used to be all the mutants are extinct and wiped out you know except for the uh, genetically created enhanced uh mutants that they're creating at uh Treskin whatever that place is called and the problem I have with that is like, okay, why is this organization creating super soldiers out of mutants? What is the purpose of that? Like, what are they doing? Like, what, like, okay, you first you extinct the mutant kind, like wipe them all out, because I guess you feel like they were a threat. Like the 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 uh, the, the constant uh, thing that are connected to all the X Men movies is that it's like a race thing, or it's like, yeah, you know mutant and proud or you know mutants are not accepted and whatnot and so finally in the logan movie they're all wiped out and now it's like now you want to create genetically enhanced uh versions of these mutants you know and it's like you want to turn them into like military soldiers for what purpose why? What's the point? Like, do you want to have them as like a private army to protect the country? Or do you want to just use them for your own benefit? And like, I don't understand what the purpose of that is. Like, why are they creating these mutant children? Like, why are they creating these mutants? I don't get it. I 
at the start of the movie, you got Logan after he killed the Vatos. He's in his limousine, and he's being confronted by the guy with the metal hand. The guy's confronting him, and he's like, yeah, the Wolverine, I know who you are, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, you know, the metal hand guy is talking to Logan, and he's like, yeah, Gabrielle is looking for you. We need to find her. Give me a call if you do. And so you think at that point, this metal guy, this guy with the metal hand is going to keep tabs on Logan. Like, yeah, he's going to follow him around. And on top of that, the, all the mutants are wiped out. And you also know that Wolverine's a mutant. Why are you keeping him alive? Why haven't you killed him? Why haven't you captured him? You know who he is. And on top of that, you even know Professor Xavier lives with him. And it's like you say that, yeah, his mind is a weapon of mass destruction. Why don't you take them out? But then I guess you don't want to do that because you're like, well, if I follow Logan, he's going to lead me to the girl, which is another problem where it's like Logan doesn't lead the metal hand guy to anywhere. It's just like he shows up on his like uh, property all of a sudden because the point in the movie where uh, this Gabriella, whatever her name is, calls a Texas Logan says we need a ride. She offers money, all this stuff. And I thought that Mexican lady was like over dramatic, like she's fallen down please help us, please. And her arm is like bloody and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I understand. She probably, you know, she was like, I got in some trouble at the border and I guess they sliced her up real good and she lost too much blood. That's why she collapses. But I really thought that was kind of like over dramatic, like some soap opera kind of stuff is really bad. But then on the point is, is that, okay, you would think that the guy with the metal hand is keeping tabs on Logan. He's gonna, he can't find Gabriella or, you know, X-20, the, the X, Weapon X or whatever, whatever the, the Daphne King's character, you know, the metal hand, guy with the metal hand can't find her. So he's like, I'm going to follow Logan and he'll take me to her. So it's like Logan finds her and at the hotel. And it's like, you think he would pop out, the guy with the metal hand would just pop out all of a sudden and be like, hey, I got you now. Now I'm going to kill all of you, kill a bunch of birds with one stone. But he doesn't pop out. He doesn't, I guess, so he's not following Logan. But then all of a sudden, once, like, you know, he leaves and then he comes back, I guess they found Gabriella and killed her. And then Daphne King's character just ran and hid somewhere while they killed Gabriella, trying to find Daphne King. Then Daphne King, once Logan showed up, hopped in the trunk, went back to the factory. Then it's like, all of a sudden, the metal, the guy with the metal hand shows up and it's like, dude, where were you? We're, like, it doesn't make any sense because it's like, okay, you, you tell Logan that, yeah, you know, boom, I know you're a mutant and wiped out your kind, but hey. You're still alive. I'm a fan. We should kill you because, you know, we kill mutants. But and we know you got Professor Xavier, but we're just going to keep you alive because I guess we're going to keep tabs on you. And you'll lead us to the girl. But then really that doesn't happen because Logan goes to the hotel where they're at. They're all there together. And the guy doesn't just show up like, oh, I got all of you. I followed you around, Logan. I know where you now. I know where you all are. And it's over like that. You can't do it because then you got no movie. So then it's like for some reason, you know, they kill Gabriella and then the guy with the metal hand shows up to Logan's and Patrick Stewart's place. Like, where's the girl? And it's like, dude, you just, why didn't you keep tabs on Logan? Why didn't you follow him? Because then you would have just caught them right there. That just doesn't make any sense to me of why he would, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. He should have kept tabs on them and just like straight up killed all of them at the hotel. If, you know, you want to keep tabs on somebody, something, he just did. He's just stupid and incompetent. I don't know. Another problem I have here is, is Taliban. Taliban, a Caliban, I mean. Caliban in this movie, to me, serves no purpose but to give exposition to the audience and about how everything is going. And yeah, he's a tracker as well, but then it's like, how does he track people? The movie doesn't explain that. The movie doesn't explain how he tracks people. He's just a tracker. And they only use him so that the villains can keep following the heroes and showing up everywhere they go because how else are they going to find them you know it's like oh we're at the casino caliban track them oh let's go to the casino because caliban knows where they are now we're at the casino then we get murdered oh now they go to this farmhouse caliban track them where are they at oh now we go here and now we found them and it's like really and then how does even how does Caliban even track them? Like I know in the comic books, people who watch read comics probably know this, but in the movie they don't show him tracking people. They don't, and they just show one torture scene with Caliban, and I don't really think it's sad. 
I'm just thinking, okay, yeah, they captured him, but Wolverine's been treating Caliban like shit anyway. You know, making him do the dirty work. I mean, yeah, it's kind of sad that, you know, he burns him and all that. Beware of the light. He burns him and stuff. But there's this one funny part in the movie. I, I'm sorry. I think it's funny where this the, 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 the villain guy, the main guy in this movie, is really bad, really bad villain. He's just an objective for the heroes, but we'll get to that. But he's like, yeah, you know, uh, what, what does he say? Yeah, he, he's talking to Caliban in this one scene about, yeah, you should help us. And this is after they burn Caliban. And then Caliban's like, y'all team burnt me and beat me. They're savages. <laughs> and I was just like, that is, it was funny the way he delivered that. I just thought it was funny. Beat me and burnt me. Your colleagues are savages. I just thought it was funny. And then, okay, so, you know, Caliban, I don't understand. He's just there for exposition. Like, he doesn't do anything. And why is he there anyway? Like, I guess he was a uh, part of the X-Men or something, and he joined their team, and then he's just there cleaning, doing your underpants and all this stuff. And it's just, it's, it's just weird. It's like they don't explain anything about Caliban, like where he came from, why he's there, what he's doing. He's just there so that once he gets captured, they, you know, the villains, the film has an excuse to have the villains show up wherever the heroes go. That's all Caliban is useful for in this movie, is to help the villains just show up wherever the heroes go. That's it. There's no other purpose for Caliban. Then he kills himself and I don't care. And then it's stupid and it's cheesy where he's like, beware of the light with the grenades and blows everything up. And it's like, mm, dude, you wouldn't just, you would try, it, it doesn't make any sense. You're going to try to make a comeback. You know, they're going to escape because the door's right there and they're going to leave. And then he just throws it at them. Like it's going to do something. But then you could say, oh, well, he wanted to kill himself. Cause you know, he was, they beat me and they burnt me savages and blow you up. And then it's just like, I didn't care. I really didn't care that he died because he didn't, he served no purpose in this movie, but exposition and to have the movie keep going so that the villains can keep finding the heroes everywhere. And here's this stupid shit. It's like, how in the hell is this woman able to record this so perfectly? And I know what it's used for. It's just used so that, you know, it can tell the audience where Daphne Keene's character came from and explain it to the audience about, you know, give her some backstory. And it makes sense. And it definitely gives you more information about Laura's character and it makes you feel a particular tenderness towards her and everything. And it also gives Wolverine the kind of gives him the like oh I'm her father kind of thing and all that and it's and it's sad you know they got the kids in there and they're kind of being like tortured and whatnot but the way it was executed is so bad like they couldn't come up with anything else like it's so lazy it's like oh yeah you know the lady she she's got a phone and she's gonna go up in here and just start recording everyone and put the camera right in their face and then on top of that, there's some really bad stuff going on in here too, because then it's like, they got, it cuts in between shots to where it's like, it, it show, shows, it, the camera's like right in there in the room with the kids. And it, you know, like the, the one of the mutants attacks one of the cameraman and they fall down and then she's got like perfect narration in this video on her phone. And it doesn't make any sense. And so it's like, it seemed like they were just in the, the, the writers of this and the director were just in a board meeting like, well, how can we get this information and relay this to the audience in, in a clever way? And I guess they couldn't come up with anything on the fly and they had to rush it and just come out with this piece of garbage. Like, I understand and it makes sense and I get it, but it's like the way it was executed was so bad. It's so cringeworthy and I don't know, it, I don't like it. It's just, it's so awful. It is so bad. And I feel like they could have done something better if they had really like put their brains together and been like, well, I would have just settled for like, you know, her like giving Logan all the files on everyone and then writing a letter, writing a letter or something before she died and then have a scene where Logan's reading it. And then it's like, you know, 
he's reading it in her voice in his head or something. I mean, yeah, that may sound stupid, but I don't know. But I feel like the way they did it was just like a Hollywood. <laughs> it, it, it instantly at that moment, it felt like your generic Hollywood movie where it's like, oh, here's some exposition in a cheesy way that makes no damn sense. Yeah, and you know, you're trying to make your film more grounded. And with this, yeah, that's not working. Like that whole that whole thing's so stupid. Like they, I feel like they could have done that way better. It's so bad. The Black Farm Family. Um, I didn't. Once you see them on screen, once I saw them, I knew they were gonna die. Like, what do you think's gonna happen? They're gonna go to this farmhouse, everything's peachy keen, then they leave. And it's, whoo, bye-bye, thanks for the meal. No. And it's like the same crap they did in X-Men Origins Wolverine, man. I watched that movie two weeks ago, in X-Men Origins Wolverine, when Wolverine leaves Alkali Lake, just getting his new metal claws. He runs naked through the farm, on a farm, and naked into this barn where the old man finds him and is like, oh, get you some clothes. And then he has a meal. He has a nice meal with this family. With an X-Men Origins Wolverine, he has a nice meal with this family. It's the same damn thing. He has a meal with this family. It's kind of a touching moment. It's not as extended as in Logan. But he has a meal. Then he goes out to the barn and all this stuff, sitting on this motorcycle, gets a fresh, nice new jacket. Then the elderly man's uh, wife comes in and she's an elderly woman with some tea and it's nice. And then she gets shot right through the chest. She gets shot right through, and it's sad, even though we don't know who they are, it's sad because it's like, oh, I like that old lady, even though she really didn't do anything in that movie. But then she gets shot, she collapses, then they shoot the old man, he dies and Wolverine escapes and they blow the barn up. So it, it follows kind of a similar, it kind of follows similar beats. So the, the family and Origins and the family and Logan are the exact same thing. And that's what kind of, that's what really pissed me off. Cause it's like, you're doing this again. You're just, just, just recopy and pasting the same thing, except changing the race and adding a few more people, you know? Well, actually adding only one person. Oh yeah, the, 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 the son and they're black. And that's really pretty much it. And so the second I saw them on the road and they got together, I was like, yeah, the black family's gonna die. So when they got killed, I really didn't care. I was just like, I, I saw this coming. And why is Logan and, and Patrick Stewart there anyway? Like they know these people are looking for him and they're gonna show up everywhere they go. Why are you there putting this family in danger? She just leave. And then, you know, Patrick Stewart tries to chalk it up to, well, you know, I'm old and whatever. I, they, they shouldn't have put that family in the movie at all they should have just stayed on the road like that i hate that whole family yeah they died but obviously there's the scene with patrick stewart and his death now i didn't like the scene yeah it's sad and i didn't like it because it was sad i didn't like it because i felt like it was forced where it's like they're trying to shove the emotion down your throat and I don't like things being shoved down my throat where it's like, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna like this, man. And it's like, no, don't make it feel natural. Make it feel genuine, you know, make it feel deserved. Make it feel like you earned it. And the movie just forced it on you and they didn't earn it. It's like, yeah, Patrick Stewart's laying in bed. Then he gives us the exposition about why, how the X-Men got wiped out and all this stuff. And then the clone version of Wolverine walks into the room and he's just standing there listening to this old man talk. And it's like, earlier in the movie they say, yeah, he's a soulless killing machine. Okay, if he's a soulless killing machine, why is he just standing there listening to this old man give his final, like, you know, say? I don't get it. I mean, you then you could you could say, well, like, you know, he, he killed him, and he killed him very slowly. He, they, they, I feel like this movie just spoon-fed dramatic. It's just spoon-fed dramatic stuff where it's just like, it's too, I don't know how to describe, it's just bad, man, where it's like he's, you know, the, the shadow walks into the room, you obviously know, or you may think that it's Wolverine, I don't know. But then, like, he's, Patrick Stewart's given his last say, 
his last speech before he dies. Obviously, he's going to die at that moment because he's got this tearful little, you know, last little moment. And he gives the exposition about what happened with the X-Men. Then he gets rolled over very slowly. And then the guy stabs him in the chest very, very slowly. It's like a ceremonial kill where he's like, yeah, very slowly. And then pull it out very slowly, all dramatic. And it's like, why would you? He killed the hillbilly guys with just like a whoosh, cut off his head very quickly. Everyone else he kills in this movie, he kills very viciously, but for some reason he killed Patrick Stewart very tenderly and slowly. Like he had a gripe with him or something. Like I guess maybe Weapon X or X-24 has like the same mind as Wolverine, but it's like reversed. So he's like, instead of loving Professor Xavier, I hate him deeply, so kill him very slowly. I didn't like that. I thought that was very forced. Yeah, his death was sad, but it's just, it could have been done better. I don't mind him dying, it just could have been done better. And then you have, like, okay, I, d I did like what uh, Hugh Jackman, Logan, did after his death, though. I thought it was very, very touching, where it's like, yeah, he buries him, he's speechless, he has nothing to say. He, you know, Daphne King tries to grab him and he just walks away and then he beats the shit out of the truck. A lot of people in my theater were laughing at that. I thought that was very just like touching and sad. Like he reached the end of his rope. I thought so that the payoff was like the execution of Patrick Stewart, Professor Xavier dying, I thought wasn't, it wasn't earned and it was very weak. And the execution of that was very piss poor and it was forced. But the payoff with Hugh Jackman being speechless at like, you know, his funeral and him burying his friend and beating up the truck after all that, you know, when he did all that stuff, I thought that was fantastic. That was fantastic. His emotion on his face was great. After that, it was fantastic. Uh, you got this crappy uh, main villain in here. The, the boss guy he is so awful like he is awful like the way he walks and truts around like he's hot shit like yeah i'm the bad guy i'm the villain you got to control whatever the rage whatever the fuck I, who cares man i mean even the movie doesn't really care about this boss this main villain guy um because like yeah at the end of the movie he tries to give a speech about why he wiped out the, the mutant race and then it's like, you know, they shoot him in the middle of his speech. And so, you know, I, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, that's what this Logan movie is. We're not listening to that shit. So that's why he got shot. This isn't that kind of it's like, well, if this isn't that kind of movie, why do you have this generic bad guy in here who's just just bad throughout the entire movie and all his scenes are awful and he feels like he's in a completely different movie? And then you, he tries to make his speech because you just want to give exposition to the audience about why the mutants are all gone. And he gets shot in the middle of his speech, like all villains do. And it's like, well, I guess this isn't, this isn't that kind of movie. But if this isn't that kind of movie, why is he even in the movie at all? I would have just settled for the guy with the metal hand being the one and only villain in this movie who has this whole team behind him with metal hands who are doing this, this dirty work and stuff. You didn't need the boss villain in here. You didn't need that guy. He didn't need to be in this movie at all. He did nothing in here but be cheesy and distract me and ruin the entire movie with his presence. He was bad. He felt like he was in a completely different movie. I did not like him. The acting is great on most fronts with like, you know, Patrick Stewart's great, best actor in this movie, Hugh Jackman is phenomenal, Daphne King is great, the violence in this movie is fantastic, it has good themes in this movie, um, the music is good, there are lots of dark moments in here, but there's just too many monumental things that I felt just dropped the ball, like Patrick Stewart's death was lazy and spoon-fed and forced, I didn't like it. Um, you know, don't mind him dying, but just do it better. Um, you know, and then like Caliban in this movie was useless. He was just there for exposition. Then he died. I didn't care. And then you got the main villain boss in here who's very weak and he's just 
poorly executed. He doesn't need to be in this movie at all. I, I would have been fine with just the metal hand guy being the only bad guy in here. And then I don't understand why this organization wants to wipe out all of mutant kind, but then they want to create mutants for God knows what purpose. If the movie did explain what the purpose of creating these mutants was for, please tell me, because I have no idea. I think it was just there as an objective to be like, let's give Logan something to do. You could say, well, those are just small things, but to me, they're not. They're very monumental things that ruin my overall experience in this movie. Honestly, I would have, I don't mind a dark movie, you know, and, or a depressing movie. Those are my kind of movies. I love those kind of movies. And, and with this, it was just too forceful. I thought like it had good themes. It had a good story on paper. It's just the overall execution of it, I thought was very piss poor and just forced and everything. And it was bad, it was poorly executed, I thought. Um, you know, with that, with the way everything unfolded. And it's like, I would have just settled for a movie about an aging Wolverine who didn't have to fight any villains at all. And he just had to let go of the past and embrace, you know, his daughter. He finds her, finds the mom, she's dead. Logan's like, oh fuck. And then Daphne King keeps following him, you know, and he's like, just leave me alone and stuff and then they get into a few things where he has to cut up some people and stuff and there's no overall bad guy there's no transigen there's no little kid mutants there's no metal guy guy with the metal hand you know and patrick stewart can still die you know or something i don't know like they i would have just settled for like a basic like story that's like kind of like let's say i would have settled for a basic Logan movie that's kind of like, let's say, Sling Blade meets, I don't know, some gritty Western movie. I would have settled for that. I would have been cool with that. And you don't need any action in it at all, except realistic, gritty fighting stuff. And I would have been cool with that if it was like Sling Blade meets a gritty Western movie without the, the, the bad guys, no villains in this movie. And if it would have done that, then I would have been like, yeah, this is original. But this movie is nothing. It's not original. Yeah, the themes in here are very good, but they're poorly executed, I think. In this movie, I don't I don't I don't like Logan. I mean, after watching it, you know, five and a half times, first time I saw it, I gave it a C. Watching it more, I give it I bump it up a tad to like a C plus because like the acting's good. The violence is good. The themes are interesting and intriguing, but then all the other stuff I just mentioned makes the movie crap. Like, I don't like the execution of this movie. It's bad. Whatever. So, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.